Namaskar and welcome to another episode of Editorial. I am going to talk to you about Foxconn. I have received a few questions on my editorial yesterday from my viewers and I want to answer those questions about Foxconn and my views on that. So that's my topic number one. It's a short topic. My topic number two is, uh, isn't the Prime Minister responsible? Isn't the Prime Minister responsible to be here in the country when the country is facing difficulties? When we had Manipur violence, Prime Minister was in US. Today we are facing floods, Prime Minister of France. Let's talk about that. Let's get right into the show. So, uh, the first point I want to make is a lot of people yesterday asked me, listen, you know what, why are we talking about the government and why are you questioning the government when uh, Foxconn and Vedanta are two private bodies, two private companies, they split. So, why are you getting the government in the middle? Lot of journalists also mentioned that, you know, they are two private companies, uh, uh, they, they, they split, they divorce, so big deal. Why is the government uh, to be involved? Oh, correct. Correct, correct, correct. Very correct. When two private companies are coming together, the government should not get involved. I agree to that. But then when two private companies came together, there was a statement from the Chief Minister of Maharashtra. There was a statement from the Prime Minister of India. Why were they giving statements? So when they came together and they were talking about 22 billion and 19.5 billion investment and all that, at that point in time, I didn't hear Vedanta talking much. I didn't hear Foxconn talking much. I only heard Prime Ministers and Ministers talking. So when they split, then Prime Minister and the Minister who were there and who were taking the credit for it should also answer, isn't it? Isn't that a very simple point that I'm trying to make? Secondly, again, the point that I tried to make about Foxconn or any other company is when any other alliance, any other company which is investing in India in any form, when it is, when that investment is blocked or when that investment is cancelled or when, the, when that investment is withdrawn, I think the country should be putting up some kind of a, a, a fact finding team to figure out what went wrong. Is there something that we can do better to ensure that such things does not happen? So that, you know, uh, such, such alliances do not break. So that that investment comes to the state which it is promised to. That's the only question I asked. And the point number three, a lot of people wrote, some of people, so very few people actually, wrote that, you know, there is an alliance with, uh, with uh, Foxconn and uh, Tata's. First of all, I don't know of any, any such factual news. Well, the sources say that. And if it happens, I am the happiest person that it is happening. That's number one. Number two is that's precisely what I said. I said that the credit of getting FDIs, the credit of getting foreign investment goes to companies, companies like Tata's, entrepreneurs of India, Indian businessmen, they get the credit for it because they work for it, they negotiate, they get them to India. That's what I said yesterday and that's precisely what a lot of people wrote back to me saying that, you know, why didn't I mention that? I said that. But all the same, I still question the government. When there is a deal, when there is a deal and for whatever reason, that particular deal in that particular format and that particular way, when the deal gets disrupted, when the deal gets withdrawn, one needs to have a fact finding team to figure out why that deal is got, why that deal got withdrawn. Because if we do that, if we, if we show that kind of accountability and that kind of responsibility and that kind of enthusiasm, even investors will feel good. Even investors will feel good to invest in India because that means we care for our investors. We are bothered about our investments. We are bothered about people who come and invest in India. We require that investment. That's the message that you are sending to the investors. And that's precisely why I made that editorial yesterday. So let's not uh, take it, uh, read it beyond what I said. A, B, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I hope uh, they tie up with Tata's. I hope Foxconn tie up with Tata and I hope Foxconn comes back to India and uh, invest in India. I hope, I hope, desperately hope, hope, pray that it happens. So that's my topic number one. And now let's get into my topic number two. And that's the topic for the day. The topic is that um, on the 3rd of May 2023, we saw Manipur riots. In fact, as on 7th July 2023, 125 people died in Manipur. Close to 300 people have been injured 
and close to 50,000 people has been displaced from their homes. 50,000 people. Now all this happened starting 3rd of May. On 19th of May, our Prime Minister visited Japan. After Japan, he visited Papua New Guinea. And after Papua New Guinea, he visited Australia. So while Manipur was burning, our Prime Minister was out on foreign trips. On 20th of June 2023, he visited the United States. And on 25th of June, he visited Egypt. So from 19th of May to 25th of May, from 20th of June to 25th of June, he was in various countries, including US, Australia, Japan, Papua New Guinea, and Egypt. But what is unfortunate is our Prime Minister didn't find the time to visit Manipur. And I find that sad. I find that sad and I find it really heartbreaking that our Prime Minister didn't go up to Manipur and tell those people, reassure that people that, you see, nothing to worry. The country is there to back them. The country is there to protect them. The country is there to take care of their needs. The country is there to see that they are not harmed. The Prime Minister didn't find the time. While, like in my earlier editorial, I said that like a parent who tells the child, or child who is sick, a parent, you know, the parent has to go to office. The parent cannot not go to office. The parent, mother or father, has to go to office. But at least before going to office, the parent visits the child, goes to his, bed, his or her bedside and tells her that, listen, you know what? I'm there for you. Don't worry. I'm there. I will just be back in a few hours and I'll be right back with you. Don't worry. Your fever, I'm there to take care of it. Nothing is going to go wrong with you. And that gives that child tremendous amount of confidence. And that feels, the child feels that, you know, there is somebody to look after him, him or her. And that gives tremendous confidence to the child. And that's precisely what I'm expecting from the Prime Minister, which the Prime Minister hasn't done. On 12th of July, on 12th of July 2023, we were affected with floods. In fact, as many as 20 fatalities were reported because of rain-related incidents. On Tuesday, that is yesterday alone, 20 fatalities. In fact, the total number is now 100. Out of these 100 numbers, 80 of them died in Himachal Pradesh. Now, let me give you the status of Himachal Pradesh. Himachal Pradesh authorities on Tuesday took stock of the havoc caused by the recent rains, saying 31 people were killed in three days in landslides and flood, which blocked nearly 1,300 roads and damaged 40 major bridges. In total, 79 houses have been damaged completely and 333 partially. This is the status of flood in Himachal Pradesh. And of course, it is it has widely affected North India. Now, uh, while this is going on, which is a natural calamity and it is it's going on in full force, on 13th to 15th, the Prime Minister of India is visiting France and United Arab Emirates. Now, I find this again very surprising. When there is a national calamity in this country, when there is floods in this country, when people are dying in this country, when thousands of people are losing their houses in this country, when an entire region is getting affected in this country, I am surprised how the Prime Minister can go for a foreign visit. I wonder if the Prime Minister were to face press, incidentally, which he doesn't, of course, but if he were to face press, a press conference, and if one press uh, journalist would have asked him, okay, how are you here? There are people dying out of because of floods in your country. What answer would he give that uh, press reporter? What answer would he give that press reporter? I'm sure he couldn't be sending central uh, uh, agencies to him because that's France. What answer would he give? And that's the question I want to ask the Prime Minister. Isn't he responsible? Isn't he supposed to be here looking after them, talking about it, coming to radio and television like he normally does and talk about them, talk to the people and say, listen, don't worry, there is help coming. There is help coming. We are there to protect you. That's our job and we'll do it. You voted me for that. And that's precisely what I intend to do. Isn't that what he's supposed to do? Isn't that important? 
you know we had uh, on 12th of uh, july uh, 2023 we had the west bengal violence again of course the prime minister wasn't present the prime minister wasn't present now here i also would like to ask trinamool congress what are you celebrating your victory after the kind of violence we saw isn't it time that mamata banerji and and people of west bengal actually introspect as to why does why is west bengal turning so violent almost every every poll every election starts and ends with violence isn't it time that mamata banerji takes responsibility for this while she is not gone anywhere she is very much in the country and in her state but isn't it time that she takes responsibility for this isn't it time that she tells her people her party men including others that violence should stop let me tell you something whatever little experience i have with the home ministry or whatever i have seen the home ministry whatever i have seen learned about the home ministry whatever little i know about the home ministry let me tell you if a state home minister state chief minister and the state police wants a violence to stop they can make it stop they are trained they are equipped and they are capable be it any state in this country be it any state in this country if the state home minister and the state chief minister puts his 100% will to ensure that a violence stops they can make it stop and especially when you are talking about political violence politicians create political violence if there is a political will if the chief minister so desires this can be stopped it can be reduced at least the fact is every time this happens in west bengal is something that's absolutely appalling you see uh, the overall death toll in the connection of recent held panchayat polls in west bengal increased to 42 42 people laid down their lives for what for a panchayat election in our own country finally to conclude a our politicians should be more responsible our prime minister chief minister should be more responsible towards our people because everything is not about symbolism everything is not about a photo op everything is not about a pr op things also have to be done on ground the presence of prime minister his presence via television or radio or whatever his presence gives a phenomenal mor morale boost for people who are doing relief work people who are rescuing people it gives a tremendous moral boost secondly it gives a lot of comfort to the people who are suffering comfort that the leader of the country is sitting there and trying his best to help us gives a phenomenal amount of comfort to people his absence and photographs of him in france and in 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 uae things of this sort makes one feel that where is my prime minister and what is he doing there when he should be here this is the point i wanted to make and uh, till i see you next time that is uh, tomorrow at 10 take care namaskar